Well, hello everybody at home. My name is Stephanie Hylensky. I'm the curator of live animals here at the museum. And I have Patience, our two-fingered sloth with me today. I'm gonna to be talking a lot about her and showing her off for you guys. So Patience here, like I said, is a two-toed sloth. But actually, we're trying to rename sloths a little bit right now because all sloths actually have three toes or three claws on their back feet. So it's the number of toes or claws on the front feet that tells us if they're a two-fingered or a three-fingered sloth. So Patience here is a linsed two-fingered or two-toed sloth. And she has lived here at the museum now for a little over six, um, almost six years now or so. And she was born at the Tulsa Zoo back in 20, um, 2012. So she's almost eight years old. She'll be eight years old in August. And just like most of our animals that live here, she was born at another zoo. So we didn't take her out of the wild, anything like that. She was born at the Tulsa Zoo. And then she came to the museum right around when she was two years old, which is around the age they would leave their moms out in the wild. So Patience here is one of my personal favorites. She's one of my best friends, honestly and she's one of my favorite animals to work with. And um, so she's eating some green beans today. Green beans are one of her absolute favorite treats. But in the wild, sloths are pretty unique eaters and they're called folivores. Folivores are a special type of herbivore. So folivores eat foliage, so that's in that name. So in the wild, sloths eat basically just leaves. That's gonna be the biggest part of their diet. Now every once in a while, they'll eat maybe some bird eggs, some caterpillars, things like that. Now scientists don't know if that's on purpose or if maybe that's an accident as a sloth is you know, eating leaves. Every once in a while, they're probably going to accidentally eat a caterpillar or bug or something like that. But green beans lately have been her favorite. And because they eat just leaves, they have a pretty special digestive system. So I like to call her a tree cow sometimes, even though sloths are very, very different from cows, they have a very similar digestive system. So she has a four chambered stomach, just like a cow does, because those leaves, they're very fibrous, not a lot of nutrition, not a lot of calories in leaves. So having that four chambered stomach gives the sloth the opportunity to get as much energy, get as many calories out of those leaves as possible. So this food she's eating today could take a week. It could actually take up to six weeks to go through her system and come back out the other end. So their digestion is very, very slow. And really everything they do is slow. Their digestion takes a lot of energy as well. So that's one reason the sloth is so slow, is to save their energy for their digestion. And one other reason that they are so slow is to hide themselves from their natural predators. They live, this species lives in South America, mainly in Brazil in the Amazon rainforest. But the six different species of sloths are native to Central and South America. So their biggest predators are usually animals like jaguars, pumas, ocelots, and also harpy eagles, which are really, really large eagles that live in the South American rainforest. And those predators mainly hunt their food by movement. So that's a big part of the reason that sloths are so slow, is that the slower you move, the harder it's going to be for a jaguar, a harpy eagle, or one of those other animals to see you when you're up in the trees. And I've heard it's about a one in a million chance if you're in the rainforest to see a sloth up in the trees, because in the wild, they don't move very much, and they will have algae growing in their fur that helps to camouflage them. So Patience here, I do like to say she's a very clean sloth. She does not have that algae growing in her fur. That algae, like I said, acts like natural camouflage. And since they're so slow, the algae naturally grows. And also the sloth's fur is adapted in a certain way. It has special grooves on their fur that helps them encourage that algae to grow. And in addition to being natural camouflage, scientists think that that algae might have antifungal and antibacterial properties to help protect the sloth when they're moving around up in the trees. So one thing you may have heard about sloths, and a lot of people don't know if it's true or not, they think it might be a myth, sloths do poop about once a week. And that's true for patients as well. And the biggest part of the reason for that is, like I said earlier, their digestion is very, very slow. So it could take a week, it could take up to three weeks for their food to pass through their system and come out the other end. So they only have to go to the bathroom once a week, and no one's exactly sure why, but sloths actually come down to the ground to go to the bathroom. There's a couple theories, one theory, is that if you're a sloth and you're up in the trees and you poop and there's a jaguar down on the ground, he knows right where you are and he's going to come up and eat you for dinner. Another theory is that the sloth is helping the tree to grow. So they usually spend most of their lives in just a small group of trees. Some sloths spend their entire lives in only one or two different trees. So when they come down to the ground, poop at the base of the tree, it is actually fertilizing the tree and helping the tree to grow. But again, it's kind of a mystery. No one's exactly sure why sloths come down to the ground to go to the bathroom. 
because they're very awkward. In the trees, they can move six to eight feet a minute, which is actually pretty fast, but on the ground, they're very awkward, they're clumsy, they don't move very quickly. So that's the last place a sloth would wanna be is down on the ground. So like I said, it's kind of a mystery why they spend so much time up in the trees. And Patience here, looks like she's not gonna eat all that green bean right now, but she is very slow. This time of day is kind of her nap time. Now, she doesn't sleep 22 hours a day like people will try to tell me she does. And most of the time, if you've come to visit the museum and you've come to see Patience, a lot of time all you're gonna see is a ball of fur because during the day she is sleeping all day long. This species of sloth, the two-fingered sloths, are highly nocturnal. So they are awake at night and asleep during the daytime, while the three-fingered sloths are actually more diurnal. And diurnal is the opposite of nocturnal. We are diurnal animals that are awake during the day and sleep at night. So this species of sloth sleeps all day and is awake all night, but they are awake usually about 12 to 14 hours every night. So they don't sleep 22 hours a day. They're really not as lazy as a lot of people think they are. And actually, I like to say koalas are much lazier than sloths because koalas usually sleep about 22 hours every single day. So patience here isn't lazy. Like I said, her slowness is an adaptation for survival and she gets up to a lot of shenanigans overnight. So she's very, very active at nighttime. But during the day, if you come to see her here at the museum, she will be asleep. Some other neat adaptations about Patience for her upside down lifestyle in the trees is her fur. Her fur actually grows backwards. So these are the only mammals that their fur grows backwards. So her fur, unlike our fur or our hair, it actually parts on her stomach and grows backwards that way. If you're old enough to know what a mullet is, Patience definitely has a little bit of a mullet going on because it does kind of get longer in the back. It's a little bit shorter in the front. And some other neat adaptations she has, as you might notice, she has a very large nose. She has an excellent sense of smell, but a very, very, um, very poor eyesight. They don't see very well, so they really use their nose to kind of find their way around and find their food. Other than that, they don't see very well, they don't hear very well, so it can be a little tricky for sloths to find each other when it comes time to have babies. And here at the museum, Patience does not have a roommate. Sloths do not get along usually very well with other sloths, so she would probably not appreciate a roommate very much but we are a member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and through that, we are involved in species survival plans. And those species survival plans or programs are programs that recommend breeding for different animals. So we are a member of the AZA, and through that, we are part of the species survival program for Lynn's Two-Fingered Sloths. Thank you everybody so much for tuning in and meeting patients. And if you enjoyed this content and want to see more of it, definitely subscribe to our channel and share these videos with your friends.